In this video for Computer Science 9618 A level, we're going to take a look at how recursion works and some past exam questions. But what do you need to know about recursion before you can start understanding it? Well, recursion is an alternative to an iterative solution. What does that mean? It's a fancy way of saying that it's an alternative to a loop. It's an alternative to a pre, post, and count controlled loop. But if it's an alternative, how is it different? Well, the code to run is inside a procedure or function, and there's a line of code that calls that same procedure or function that we're already in and makes a call to it again. It literally makes a call to the procedure or function it is already in. It calls itself. When a recursive procedure or function calls itself, it's put onto a stack. And that is the foundation of how recursion works. You have to be able to understand stacks. Now, remember, stacks work on the first in, last out principle. It's going to, when we remove an item from the stack, it's going to remove the most recent item that was added. This means the most recent call in a, recur in a recursive statement is handled first before the earliest calls to that same procedure or function. And this leads to what is called winding. Now, every time a call to the procedure is made, the current call is added to the stack. So if we're on a, if we call a calculation, we go down to calculation, and then there's a line of code that calls calculation, even though we're already in it, that is a recursive call. The calculation method is has a line of code that calls itself again while we're already in there. That current call that we're on gets paused, it gets placed onto the stack, and now that new call will be handled first. Now this can be a little hard to understand at first, and I'm gonna show you when we walk through those exam questions so you can gain a firm understanding. Now when we reach the base case, unwinding begins to occur, and we can start popping from the stack, handling all those calls to the uh, method or procedure or function that was on the stack. We can start popping them one at a time and handling those, and that will allow us to get back to what we were originally trying to solve in the first place. But what do we mean by the base case? Just like loops have a condition that must be met to exit, so do recursive calls, and we call that the base case. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at some past exam questions so we can take all this information and put it into practice so we can gain a firm understanding of recursion. So here's a question about recursion. The recursive algorithm for the calculate function is defined as follows. And you can see they give us some pseudocode here to follow. State what is meant by a recursive algorithm. That has nothing to do with this function whatsoever. We just have to tell them what a recursive algorithm or recursive procedure or function is. And it's simply a procedure or function that calls itself. Then it asks us to state the line number and calculate where the recursive call takes place, where it calls itself. And that's right here. How do I know that this is the recursive call? Well, let's take a look at the function name. It is calculate and accepts one parameter number as an integer. Where do I see that in my line of code or the code that they have given us? Where do I see that? I see that on line six right here. I have calculate followed by the parameter that I'm going to be passing. So it takes place in line six, or we can say line zero six. Either one of those would be acceptable. Now let's trace out this function so we can see how the recursion takes place. In this example, they want us to dry run the function and complete the trace table. And we, they want us to state the final value returned. The function is called with calculate three. Let's begin filling out this trace table. The function is called with calculate three. What call number is that? That's my very first call. What is the function call? Calculate three. That is given to us right here. We check to see if number equals zero. What is number? That is the parameter being passed when we call the function calculate. Three is number. If three equals zero, three doesn't equal zero, that is false. So we jump over the then, we move to the else. What is the return value? It's gonna be number times calculate number minus one. What is number? Three. Three times calculate three minus one, which is calculate 
2. The return value is 3 times calculate 2. We are winding now. Look at call number 2. What is call number 2? Well, what did it call? Where's that recursive call? Not 3 times calculate 2, just calculate 2. Does 2 equal 0? No, it does not. We jump down to this else. What's the return value? 2 times calculate 2 minus 1. What's 2 minus 1? 2 minus 1 is 1. So we are returning 2 times calculate 1. And that brings me to my third call number. We are still winding because we have not reached our base case. So the ca third call is calculate 1. Is 1 equal to 0? No, it's not. We jump down to this else. We return 1 times calculate 1 minus 1, which is 0. So now we do the fourth call. Calculate 0. Is 0 equal to 0? Yes, it is. What is the return value? Well, if number equals 0, then calculate equals negative 10. The return value is negative 10. That is all my winding that is done. Because I've reached my base case, it's now time to unwind. The first thing I need to do is I got to pop the first item from my stack, which is calculate 1. I'm going to pop that from my stack. I have to solve that before I do calculate 2. And then our original call, calculate 3. When, when I look at calculate 1, it says the return value is 1 times calculate 0. Because we have now solved for calculate 0, we can now solve 1 times calculate 0. Calculate 0 gives me negative 10. So I'm doing 1 times negative 10. What is 1 times negative 10? Negative 10. Now that I've solved calculate 1, I can solve uh, 2 times calculate 1. So I'm going to pop calculate 2 from my stack. What is 2 times calculate 1 or 2 times the result of calculate 1, which is negative 10? That's going to be negative 20. Now that I have solved that, I can pop calculate 3 from my stack and I can do 3 times negative 20, which is the result of calculate 2. And that gives me negative 60. What is my final return value? Negative 60. Let's take a look at another past exam question. You can see in this example, they have recycled a couple of the questions. The only difference here, instead of a function, they used a procedure. This procedure doesn't return anything, but it is going to output. And we'll talk about how we get there at the end. Explain what is meant by recursively defined. In other words, what is recursion? Recursion is simply a procedure or function that calls itself. In this example, we can see that call x is the recursive call. Can you put that in your answer? Absolutely. Do you have to? No, because it's only worth one mark. If you see that it's worth two marks, you may want to write a procedure or function that calls itself and then identify what makes it recursive. Just make sure you satisfy the condition of the question. Look at part B. Explain how a stack is used during the execution of a recursive procedure. So we know that recursion uses stacks, but how does that work? We have to explain how a stack is used. Well, the current call is placed onto the stack. Now, when we place the call onto the stack, that includes all values stored in the registers and or the variables as well. Then, in our unwinding, we pop from the stack one at a time, and those values that were saved in the registers and the variables, they're loaded back so we can find that final return value. Let's take a look at another trace table that traces this algorithm so we can be more prepared to solve the recursion questions. In this example, they want us to dry run the procedure X by completing the trace table for the procedure call. Now, this is not going to return a value. It is going to have a value, but it's not going to return anything because it's a procedure. Here, they've done call 1 for us, and they call X passing 40, which is going to be in as an integer. So we check this, our base case. Is 40 equal to 0? Or is 40 equal to 1? No, it's not. Our base case hasn't been reached, so we're going to continue with the recursive call. We jump down to this else statement. Notice we have two lines of code here. Does it run this output? 
not right away because it has to handle this recursive call first. So we make a call to x. What are we passing? We're doing 20, or in this case, 40 divided by 2, which is 20. Because I've made this recursive call, it stops executing temporarily and it puts x40 onto the stack. And it'll come back to it after it handles the most recent recursive call, which is 40 div 2 or x20. That is call number 2. n is equal to 20. We check to see if our base case has been reached. Is 20 equal to 0 or equal to 1? No, it's not. That's false. So now we make a recursive call, but we do 20 or n divided by 2, which is 10. Because we've made this recursive call, this output isn't going to run yet because x20 just got put right onto the stack. Now we make the call to x10. n is equal to 10. Is 10 equal to 0 or equal to 1? We're checking to see if we've reached our base case. We haven't reached our base case. We must continue winding. So then we do 10 divided by 2. That is 5. Because we just made this recursive call, this output isn't going to run just yet. x10 gets placed onto the stack. So now we do uh, x5. n is 5. We're checking the base case. Is 5 equal to 0 or is 5 equal to 1? No, it's not. We continue winding. So we jump to this else statement. We see we are making another recursive call. What is 5 div 2 or 5 divided by 2 using integer division, which means we simply drop the decimal. That is 2. So we haven't reached our base case. n div 2 is 2. Because I've made a recursive call, x, x5 goes onto the stack. So now I do x2. n is equal to 2. 2 is not equal to 0, nor is it equal to 1. So that is false. So now I do 2 divided by 2, which is 1. I'm making a call to x1. That means x2 is going to go onto the stack. So now I call x1. n is equal to 1. I check my base case. Is n equal to 0 or is n equal to 1? Yes, it is. That is true. I have reached my base case. What do I do if my base case is reached? It says to output n. What is n? That's my parameter, which is 1. So I put 1 down here on my output line. Now that I've reached that, I can go ahead and start unwinding or popping from the stack. The first thing I need to uh, pop is x2. Because when I pop x2, remember, I'm resuming right where I left off, which is this output statement, which is in mod 2. What was in? It was 2. What is 2 mod 2? That is simply 0. Well, then I pop x5. Well, now I'm outputting mod 2, so I'm actually going to output that uh, 0 down here. Then I need to pop x5. I'm picking up right where I left off, which is right after the recursive call where I put my blue arrow. So what is 5 mod 2? That is 1. Now I need to output that because it says to output 5 mod 2. I add that on to my output answer. Now it's time to pop x10. I pop x10. What is 10 mod 2? That is 0. What does it say to do with that? It says to output in mod 2 or output 10 mod 2. That result is 0. I add that to my output answer. It's now time to pop x20, picking up where we left off, which is this output uh, line of code. What is 20 mod 2? That is 0. What does it say to do with that 0? It says to output it. We output it. Then we are able to handle the last call, x40, which was initially our first call. What is 40 mod 2? It is also 0, and I have my final output answer, 101, 0, 0, 0. It must be in this order because when you make a recursive call, things are added to the stack. This is not the same thing as 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, because a stack works on the first in, last out principle. Let's wrap this up, taking a look at what we could have on paper 3 and paper 4. This is a topic that could be assessed on paper 3 and 
paper forward. And it's a pretty popular question that they ask. Now for paper three, it may look exactly what it looked like today in the video. You may have to complete a trace table. They may also give you a recursive solution and ask you to write an iterative solution using the recursive solution as a guide. Now paper three does involve pseudocode, so you wouldn't be writing actual code, you'd be writing pseudocode. They could ask you to simply describe recursion. Now if they say to describe how recursion works, make sure to mention that it calls itself and that it works using stacks. Now for paper four, one of their favorite questions is to write a binary search recursively. Now I do have a video on this if you need help with writing a recursive binary search. They could also give you pseudocode showing a recursive procedure or function and ask you to convert it to actual code. I have seen that on paper four as well. I hope this helps. If you found this video helpful, please take a moment to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to help the channel grow. And we'll see you guys in the next programming video.